Previously on World History and Geography. Under Shi Huangdi, the Qin Dynasty had unified China. Shi Huangdi established a strong government by conquering the rival kings who ruled small states throughout China. After Shi Huangdi died in 2010 BCE, his son proved to be a weak and ineffective leader. After years of high taxes and forced labor under the Qin Dynasty, the peasants rebelled and the rival lords fought over territory, dragging China into a civil war. And now, our feature presentation. During the civil war that followed the fall of the Qin Dynasty, two powerful leaders emerged, Chiang Yu and Liu Bang. Eventually, Liu Bang turned on and defeated Chiang Yu in 202 BCE. Liu Bang declared himself the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. No, that should read Han Dynasty. That's better. The Han Dynasty lasted more than 400 years. The new emperor continued the Qin's policy of establishing a centralized government in which the central authority, usually located in the capital, controlled the running of the nation. Later, Liu Bang's great-grandson, Wu Di, took the throne in 141 BCE and reigned for 54 years. Wu Di was known as the Martial Emperor, or War Emperor, because he adopted the policy of expanding the Chinese Empire through war. Chinese society under the Han Dynasty was highly structured. Because the Chinese believed their emperor to have divine authority, they accepted his total power. If the emperor did his job well, China had peace and prosperity. If he failed, the heavens showed their displeasure with earthquakes, floods, and famine. However, the emperor did not rule alone. The Chinese emperor relied on a complex bureaucracy to help him rule. Wu Di's government employed more than 130,000 people. The bureaucracy included 18 different ranks of civil service jobs, which were government jobs that civilians obtained by taking examinations on history, law, literature, and Confucianism. The civil service system begun by Wu Di worked so efficiently that it continued in China until 1912. Running the bureaucracy and maintaining the imperial army were expensive. To raise money, the government levied taxes. Chinese peasants owed part of their yearly crops to the government. Merchants also paid taxes. Besides taxes, the peasants owed the government a month's worth of labor or military service every year. With this source of labor, the Han emperors built roads and dug canals and irrigation ditches and expanded the Great Wall. Chang Cheng. The 400 years of Han rule saw great advances in Chinese technology and culture. Zhi. Paper was invented in CE 105. Originally, it was used as blankets and clothes, but when it could be made thinner, the Chinese started using it to write on. Before that, the Chinese usually wrote on silk or strips of bamboo, but paper was cheaper, so paper books became more readily available. This helped spread education in China. The invention of paper also affected Chinese government. Formerly, all government documents had been recorded on strips of wood. Paper was much more convenient to use for record keeping, so the Chinese bureaucracy expanded. Another technological advance was the collar harness for horses. This invention allowed horses to pull much heavier loads than did the harness being used in Europe at the time. The Chinese perfected a plow that was more efficient because it had two blades. They also improved iron tools, invented the wheelbarrow, and began to use water mills to grind grain, all leading to increased productivity. During the Han Dynasty, the population of China swelled to 60 million people. Because there were so many people to feed, people considered agriculture the most important and honored occupation. But manufacturing and commerce were still very important to the Han Empire. The government established monopolies on the mining of salt, the forging of iron, the minting of coins, and the brewing of alcohol. A monopoly, I love that game. I like to be the car. A monopoly occurs when a group or government has exclusive control over the production and distribution of certain goods. For a time, the government also ran huge silk mills, making silk from the cocoons of mulberry tree leaf eating silkworms. They're so cute! Ancient peoples valued silk because it was strong, lightweight, and beautiful. As contact with people from other lands increased, the Chinese realized how valuable their silk was as an item for trade. Because of this, the techniques of silk production became a closely guarded state secret in China. Traders made fortunes carrying Chinese silk to the west around dry deserts and high mountains. Because of this, the caravan trails that crossed Asia were called the Silk Road. Okay, who imagined a road made of silk? No. Even though many other valuable trade goods were also carried along the network of trade routes, it is still referred to as the Silk Road. Spurred by the worldwide demand for silk, Chinese commerce expanded the Silk Roads to most of Asia, all the way to Europe and Rome. In Rome, a pound of silk could trade for a pound of gold. The Silk Road went over water, too, on the Mediterranean and on the Pacific to Japan. An individual trader would not travel the whole route from China to Rome. Traders exchanged with other middlemen who transported it to the next link in the trade chain. And it wasn't just goods that were traded. Buddhism and other ideas or inventions also spread over the trade routes. As the Han Empire expanded its trade networks, they also expanded the empire through conquest. To unify the empire, the Chinese government encouraged assimilation, the process of making conquered peoples part of the Chinese culture. In spite of economic 
No, I said spite, not sprite. In spite of economic and cultural advances, the Han emperors faced grave problems. One of the main problems was an economic imbalance caused by customs that allowed the rich to gain more wealth at the expense of the poor. Large landowners were not required to pay taxes, so when their land holdings increased, the amount of land that was left for the government to tax decreased. With less money coming in, the government pressed harder to collect money from the small farmers. As a result, the gap between rich and poor increased. By 220 CE, the Han Dynasty suffered from economic imbalances, political intrigues, and social unrest, and the Han Dynasty fell and broke China into three rival kingdoms. Now, 